Today we're going to put together an Intel Next Unit of Computing. This is an amazing little device for a home theater PC or even just a family computer. Each one of these kits comes as a bare bones setup, so you'll need to purchase a hard drive. We went with an M500 240GB solid state drive. We also chose to go with an upgraded Intel Celeron wireless card. This is a 7260 AC. The NUC already comes with a wireless card installed. It's a 7260N. But since we have an AC capable router, we may as well go with the best since we will be using this as a home theater PC for streaming. You will also need to purchase some RAM. We went with a 2x4 gigabyte kit since we are going to be building two of these, but you will only be using one of these 4 gigabyte RAM chips in this particular unit. Disassembly is pretty straightforward. There are four screws on the bottom that you'll need to take out first. I found it easiest to pull on the little rubber feet to pull the bottom cover off. As soon as you get the cover off, you can see the caddy for your storage drive, and then also the SATA and power connector for the drive. Next we just need to remove this layer. It should pull right out. You may need to wiggle it a little bit. You won't be able to fully remove this layer until you've disconnected the power and the SATA cables for your storage drive. The power cable for the drive bay pulls right off, but it's a pretty tight fit. Once you've removed the power cable, you want to take both the power and the SATA cables out from the little retention slot that's holding both of the cables in for cable management. Once both of those cables are free, your next step is to disconnect the SATA cable. The SATA cable is pretty easy to remove, disconnecting it from the motherboard. It pops right off. As you can see, it uses just a standard SATA connector. And the rest of it looks like a pretty simple hot swap bay for two and a half inch hard drives. Now with this layer removed, we have access to the Wi-Fi card and the RAM slot. On this particular build, we are going to replace the Wi-Fi card. Typically, you're probably not going to, but to remove the antennas, a screwdriver comes in handy. And all you need to do is pry up on the little connectors and they pop right off. As soon as the antenna is disconnected, all you have to do is take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the one retaining screw that's holding down the Wi-Fi card and it should pop right up. And once it's free, it'll slide right out of the mini PCIe slot.
may not be able to see very well, but the one on the top says wireless AC, where the one on the bottom, which came with the Intel NUC, says wireless N. We're going to be replacing the wireless N with the wireless AC, which is the newer technology. All you have to do is take the new Wi-Fi card, insert it into the PCI slot, push it down, and put the retaining screw back in. Basically just do everything in reverse of taking it out. I found that using a flathead screwdriver to press the antenna connectors back onto the card can be pretty useful, so I would recommend doing that. Next we need to install the RAM. This motherboard does not support dual channel memory, so you will only be able to insert one RAM chip. This is something you'll want to keep in mind when selecting the RAM that you want to buy. This installation will be very simple. It'll be similar to the installation of the Wi-Fi card. Make sure that you line up the pins correctly. There is a slot in the RAM chip that you'll also see that will match up with the uh, slot that you're going to line it up with. Once you insert it, make sure it's fully seated and then press down and it should click right into place. We are all done with that layer now. Now it's time to put the top layer back on. All we need to do is reconnect the SATA cable and then reconnect the power cable and make sure the cable management is lined back up. It was at this point where I realized I probably should have installed my solid state drive before connecting those cables, but it's pretty easy just to prop up the top layer to be able to access it. Make sure that the connections on your drive are lining up with the way they are in the drive bay. Once you've figured out the orientation your drive needs to be in, insert it into the drive bay and it should click right into place. You can see that since I have a 7mm drive and did not use the 9mm adapter, there's a little bit of play for it to move around in the bay. Fortunately, the kit came with some retaining screws that we're going to insert into the drive to lock it into place.
Our next step is to make sure that the top layer is fully seated and we're going to get ready to close this thing back up. You'll notice on the inside of the bottom cover there's a ridge that's raised up. It'll need to line up with the space that is free between the mounting bracket and the drive bay. By the way, those mounting brackets are for the Visa mounts on the back of your TV or monitor. Now we just need to tighten the screws for the bottom cover. And we're done. Hope you've enjoyed this video.